Hey everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at another shader. I have a comment here saying, Can you make a shader that replaces a certain color with another assigned color without affecting the rest of the sprite's color? Sure, why not? This is what we're going to be creating, and this is the final result of what we're going to be doing here. So you can see I have the original on the right, and then the replacement here on the left. Now I have a little bit of buffer between my colors, but if I go over the girl's hat, you can see that the hat changes and any colors that are close to that gray are also changing. Same with the skin here and as well as the shirt or even the skateboard if I can get my mouse over that. So let's roll the intro and let's get right to it. Now you might notice my screen is a little bit different. I'm using 2.3 that was released today. And the reason I'm using 2.3 is because I want to show off a couple of new things that you can find in Game Maker Studio. Now I have everything that we need for the project here, which you can download in the description. We have any source files, so that would be the sprite. We have the object for the skater girl, and then we have the sprite itself, and that's about it. The only thing I will mention while I'm doing the demo here, I have the frame rate set to four. In the previous demo, it was set to 26, I believe, to speed things up. Now inside my room, I just have my instance on the left and I have the sprite itself on the right. So we're gonna be changing the object, but we just want the original just to see what it looks like. Okay, so with all that out of the way, the very first thing we're gonna be doing is creating the shader to handle everything. So let's right click on shaders. Uh, you don't have to, I just like my folders to be nice and organized here. Then we're going to create a new shader called SH replace color. And I'm going to try and follow some standard there and I'm going to maximize my code. So we're not going to be dealing with the vertex shader because we're not moving positions, but instead we're going to be dealing with the fragment shader, which is the pixel itself. So what we need to do is we need a couple different variables and we're going to have a little bit of a buffer between the colors and then we need a color for matching and a color for replacing. So that means that we need a uniform float for a range. Then we need a uniform vector four. We're going to be using as a color for matching. And then finally a uniform vector four for a color replace or replacement. Now inside the main is where we're going to be doing all of the actual coding. Now, GL fray color is the pixel itself in the very end. We can't really add anything onto that. So we're going to create a new vector four inside this main and we will just call it pixel color. And all we're going to say is equal to whatever game maker has here. So this is just getting the single pixel at each coordinate of that sprite. Now I need to deal with the range. So in shaders, colors and everything like that are between zero and one. Where in Game Maker, say the sprite here, the colors are in between 0 and 255. So we have to do a little bit of conversion, especially for our range here. So we have to make a new variable. So I'll make a new float and I'll just call it new range. And that's going to equal to the range that we're passing in divided by 255.0. If we don't have the dot zero there, we will have an error because we're dealing with a float and it expects that period to be there along with whatever numbers afterwards. Now, the logic for this shader is actually pretty simple. All we need to do is we need to say if the red color matches the red color that we're looking for and it falls between the range, then check the green and the blue. So to logically write that out, we would say if the pixel color, so the current color red matches the color match dot red, if whatever value that is, is less or equal to our new range value, remember this will give us a number between zero and one. And this will also give us a number between zero, run, zero and one. If that falls within between the new range, then we need to go inside the if. Now, this statement right here is not fully not fully done and it's not correct because we need to make sure we absolute the value that we're given here. We don't need any negative values. So if we get the absolute value of the red minus the red, and as long as that falls within the new range, and then we'll come inside this if statement. Now, all we need to do is copy it for green and copy it for blue and add our closing parentheses. Now let's go ahead and give one for green and give one for blue. 
Now, if everything works and we're falling in between this new range, all we have to do is replace that current pixel color with the color replacement that we've passed in. So we could say pixel color, we could say dot r equals color replace dot r, and we could continue on doing red, green, and blue, or we can be smart about it and say replace the red, the green, and the blue components with the red, green, and blue components of the color replace. Now the only thing we have to do at the very end, and instead of using whatever is at the actual x and y coordinates of the sprite, we want to use the pixel color which we are manipulating. So now we have our shader done. So let's open up the object and let's maximize this as well. So in the create event, we could deal with multiple variables. We could have an array or we could have a bunch of different variables. Let's pretend we went way, way back. We could have a color match red, a color match blue, color match green, and then we would have a replace green, blue, and red. But we're using 2.3. So let's talk about how we can create what I like to call a class. So I'm going to create a new class called color, and it's going to be equal to a function where we pass in the red component, the green component, and blue component. Now we need to make sure that we're able to pass these items in, so we need to create a constructor for it. Now within this function, I'm going to have some local variables. I'll name mine red, and I'll make sure that it's assigned the R value. Then we'll have the green, and finally the blue component. Now what this means is I can come down here and I can easily create a variable, let's say call color match, and that's going to be equal to a new color. And now I can pass in, let's say 50, 50, and 50 for red, green, blue. Now, if I wanted to access this color match, let's say I go show message, I could say color match dot red. And when I run my game, hopefully this will give me the output of 50. And you can see that it indeed does. So what we're doing here is we're taking the color component here and we're saying output just this red value. Because I passed in 50 into the R slot, it will get automatically fed in. So now I can copy this and I can paste it. And instead of saying color match, I can say color replace. And I'm gonna put in that hot pink value, which was 234, 48, and 255. Now that we have our colors set up, we need to access them in the shader. So in the shader, we had three uniform variables. We had a range, color match, and replace. So that means that we need to have three handles in order to access those. So we can have an sh handle of range, and we're gonna use a shader, get uniform, and we're gonna pass in the shader itself, which is replace color, and then in quotes, what we need to do for the range, is make sure that we spell this correctly and it's just range, so I'll copy and paste it in. If we don't spell that correctly, we're gonna run into issues and GameMaker won't be able to fill that value in. Now we need to do the same for the color match and color replace. Now that we have that information, we have the handles and then we have the get uniform and replacing the variables in there, we can go over to the draw event. So right now we're just drawing ourselves, which is completely fine for the shader but we need to first set the shader to the sh and we need replace color and because we changed our shader we should reset it at the end so it goes back to the game maker shader now we need to actually set the variables in there such as range color match and replace so range is an easy one all we could say is shader set uniform f and we're going to pass in the handle and it's going to be range and it's going to pass in the number one to make it a one to one ratio now when it comes to the colors we could say shader underscore set uniform f and once again we will pass in the same handle and we will start with the match so what we could do here is we could say color match dot red and remember, we're gonna run into an issue here because our color match.red has a value between zero and 255, but the shader expects a value between zero and one. So yes, that means we could come here and we could divide this by 255 and get the same thing, but we're using GameMaker 2.3. So let's actually go to the create event. And what this means is in this class here, color, we can add new functions into it. So I could add a static function and I'll call this to shader value. And it's going to be a function that accepts a value and then it returns the value divided by 255. 
Now, the reason that I like doing this is because if I'm using this two shader value throughout my code and I discover a bug, I don't have to look for everything that was divided by 255. I just have to come to this function here, fix my mistake, and then it works everywhere. I, oh, I see a mistake there, so I'll add in the equal sign. So like I said, this will minimize the errors that we make and we can use this throughout the code. One thing to also remember is we're doing this within the object skater girl. So that means that this actual class here just exists in this particular object. If we wanted to make it global, we would create a new script and we would place it in there. But that's a later video. So now back in the draw event, instead of just saying color match red, we could say color match dot two shader value and we'll just pass in the red component and the green component and then the blue component and we'll copy and paste this because we also need to do one for our replace and make sure we change the right variable to replace so we're using that function and we are using the values there now, if I hit F5, let me actually go back here and change the color to black. And if I hit F5, let's see if we have anything that's changed. So we have the outline that's changed, and that's because if you look on the original sprite, we have some black right there. Now, the only thing really left to do is make it so when I hover over an area on the sprite, we change it to match whatever pixel I'm on. So let's close this and go to the step event. So in the step event, I need to get the current pixel and I'll create a local variable for that. And I will use the draw get pixel function. Now remember that this function is very heavy, so we don't want to use it a lot, but in this demonstration, it's fine. I'll use the mouse positions X and Y. And now the draw get pixel will return a number. We need to get the specific components for red, green, and blue from that. So I'll create a new local variable and luckily GameMaker has a get red function where we pass in the color from the get pixel. And it also has a green and a blue function. So we'll pass those in, make sure that we change the information here. Now, the only thing we need to do is we need to go and change this color match variable to match whatever we found underneath the mouse. So we could say color match dot red equals red color match dot blue equals blue and color match dot green equals green. So let's hit F5 and see what we have here. Once our game loads up, if I bring my mouse over to the hat, you can see that now this portion of the hat has changed. If I go over a little bit, now that portion has changed. Now you will notice that in the demo, we had a little bit more breathing room with the colors. So all we have to do is come over to the draw event and up this range here. So I'm gonna set it something high like 50. And when I hit F5, now if I hover over the hat, you can see that the entire hat has changed and any other colors that are close to that particular object or particular hat, have also changed. Same with the skin or the shirt or even the skateboard. So now we've created a simple shader that allows us to change the color on a sprite without interfering with the other colors. If you like what you see, please check out my Patreon. Please like and subscribe to the video. And thanks for watching. A special shout out to my awesome Patreon supporters in no particular order. Manuel, Vil, Kylie, Victor, Paul, Ashby, Annie, Edward, Jujub84. Thank you so much. For this video, I'm giving away Hellblade. This game is really amazing, and with everything happening in 2020, we all need to take a little break and take care of our mental health. I hope whoever grabs this game will enjoy it as much as I did.